So I finally got my NVMe hat and I'm going to now connect it to my Raspberry Pi. So let's look at it. Now straight out of the box we have these components that is you have these two FPC cables then you have a screwdriver you have some attachments to attach it to the Raspberry Pi and then you have this manual itself. Now this manual contains information of how you can configure the NVMe drive such that it's bootable on the Raspberry Pi. Now let's take this thing away right now and let's look at the board that we are interested in. So this is how the board looks like. The board is of the dimensions like 5.5 to 6.5 centimeters and this will fit on top of the four screw holes that we have on the Raspberry Pi itself. Now let's flip this board and see what is there behind. So there's some kind of a gap here which will allow some airflow to pass through and this has a connector here to the GPIO pins itself. Now let's flip it back again. Now this board supports NVMe drives of the type 2230 and 2242. So these are the two slots that are present here. Now here is the PCI Express slot in which we will be connecting the NVMe drive itself. Now this is the third generation port and it supports M.2 NVMe drives which has the configuration of M hyphen key. So we will now connect the NVMe drive to this now. So now I have this NVMe drive. Now this is a PCI Gen 4 drive. Now PCI Express slots are backward compatible. So I'm assuming that this should work right now. So this is the drive that I have right now. Let's now connect this drive to this board. So for that, I need to first remove this nut from here. So let's do that first. And I'm going to connect the NVMe drive itself. Okay, so with this we have our NVMe drive installed into the board itself and let's flip this and if you see right now there's this gap here which will allow air to pass through for the cooler itself. So that's what at least I'm hoping right now. Now next what we are going to do is we are going to connect this to our Raspberry Pi itself. So let me get my Raspberry Pi here. So I have this Raspberry Pi which was in the official case. So I'm going to keep the case aside now and this is my Raspberry Pi 5. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this FPC cable and I'm going to put this inside the PCI Express slot. So let me put this here. So with this gone firmly inside, this connector is now connected properly. So now let's go ahead and connect the hat itself. So I have the hat here and I'm going to now put it in the GPIO pins. This is set here and now let's put the FPC cable inside the hat itself. So, so with this, we have our hat connected to our Raspberry Pi using this FPC cable. Let's look at how much gap is there. So there's quite some gap between the fan and the board itself. And there is a little bit of gap between the SSD and the board itself. So now what we are going to do is we are going to remove this micro SD card from here and we are going to put in Raspberry Pi OS on this. So now with this, I'm going to insert the SD card. So let me put the SD card here. The SD card is in and now I'm going to connect this to this official charger from Raspberry Pi. So the Raspberry Pi has now started and if you see on the board right now, this LED is dimly lit because it has got power but it is not working right now. If there was some activity with the NVMe drive, then this would have been blinking here. So let's go ahead and see on the terminal what we have here. So let me type ls blk command and if you see we just have only the micro sd card that is available right now now in order to have this nvme drive to be detected what we need to do is we need to edit this file let me type sudo and i'm going to open this boot slash config.txt file so here what i'm going to do is i'm going to put in these parameters that is dt param pci express one and dt params pci express one underscore gen and I'm going to set it right now to Gen 2. So with this, I'm going to save this file. Now I'm going to reboot the Raspberry Pi. So if you see right now, it is blinking white here on this LED because it has now detected the NVMe drive. And let's type LSBLK. So if you see right now, we have the NVMe drive being already detected here. So that's the NVMe drive right now here. And now what we are going to do is we are going to actually run some benchmarks to see what are the read speeds that we are getting from the NVMe drive. So for this, I'm going to install this small utility called as HT param. And let's look at the drive back again. 
and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to type this command hdparam slash t with the location of the NVMe drive. So now this will actually test the read speeds and if you see here it is rapidly blinking right now and I got speeds of around 443 Mbps. So this was a Gen 2 speeds, right? Let's actually change to Gen 3 and here I'm going to now change this to Gen 3 and I'm going to now reboot the Raspberry Pi. After the reboot, let's open the terminal again and I'm going to run the same command as before. So I got speeds of around 795 Mbps. So this is a Gen 3 speeds that we are getting for this drive right now that I have and this is pretty good right now. So initially when I connected the NVMe drive with the hat, it did not detect it. So then I did a little bit of research and I figured out that there's a small bug in the official Raspberry Pi 5 power supply itself, wherein it might not provide you the entire 25 watts. Now to get around this problem, what you have to do is that after you make changes to your boot slash config.txt file, you have to shut it down and then afterwards disconnect the power supply from your wall unit as well as disconnect it from your Raspberry Pi itself. Then reconnect them both and then start your Raspberry Pi. And this will solve the problem of the power supply itself. Now, if you like this video, make sure to hit that like button as well as hit that subscribe button for more such videos to come. Till then, take care and I will see you in my next one.